All right, so this is the, uh, the landing page uh, that uh, we had worked on uh, last time we met. And uh, we, it's a uh, template that we copied straight from uh, Bootstrap. And it's a legitimate uh, a starting place right, for, the, for the assignment, even for your own project, uh, or even for the landing page for the course. This is a, a legitimate um, piece of code that you might, you might you reuse uh, for, for, your, for yourself. Um, it's already uh, uh, responsive. Okay. Um, one of the problems that, that you might you might find here, notice that the we, we added several hyperlinks here that uh, were not there originally. Okay. Uh, and uh, we had said that um, as we progress through the through the, through the semester, we're going to uh, revisit this uh, so that uh, we don't want all four links here, or maybe even these five links, to show up all at once. Right. Uh, depending on the status of the of the role of the user, depending on whether they're lo already logged in or not, we're gonna we're going to dynamically uh, hide and show these hyperlinks. Okay, um, but for now, because it's static, notice that uh, we have a, a the problem that when it's too small, it it wraps right, and that's that wasn't the original intent. And because because it wraps, notice that uh, it uh, it overlaps the the rest of the content. Okay, so be careful. Um, uh, Eventually, if you keep making it smaller and smaller and smaller, it goes away. Right? It goes back to normal. Okay? Uh, but uh, obviously, these are way too many hyperlinks uh, to show here. We're going to fix that a little later. Uh, but but uh, you'll hear me say, uh, e even as a requirement for the, for the project, to be careful for unwarranted wrap, wrappings. Okay? Uh, that, that it, when things wrap because they don't fit, uh, be careful uh, that it's occluding other content, right? That uh, it's making other content be too big that it overlaps something else and it hides hides it. So be careful, right? So don't don't get into into the habit of just looking at it at, at full screen or at at phone screen, right? You know, always um, you know uh, resize your screen to make sure that it's that it looks good at all all sizes. Right now it's over uh, uh, wrapping. And it's oh, and it's occluding this uh, this um, jumbo uh, uh, message over here. See that? And that's unintended. That's not what we intend to do. And you would lose a couple points for that. Right, so be careful with with, with uh, wrappings that are not behaving the way you would expect. Okay? Uh, we'll come back to that a little later. But uh, uh, just just uh, just a, uh, a note. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's look at the login page that we were working on before. Uh, this is the login page. There it is. Uh, and uh, and and we we had started uh, working on in the, under the public directory, under the assignment directory. That's where I'm asking you to do all your work. Yes. So there it is, my my first page that we worked on uh, last time, uh, and we introduced uh, the the uh, we introduced loading the uh, the Bootstrap uh, library. Right, we're hosting it locally. Uh, at the end of the semester, uh, before we close out, I'm going to ask you to modify this to use a CDN instead. Okay, right now it's uh, it's using the uh, a locally hosted Bootstrap min. Yes, right. Uh, by CDN, uh, I, I, what I mean is that um, there are several uh, servers out there that are that already host these files out there. Right, so one of them is. Um, Bootstrap CDN. This is one of them, uh, and uh, so so notice that this is this is a link that is hosted uh, in, at a different location uh, as opposed to our own uh, server, right? So href rel style sheet. Okay. Notice that these two links are loading the same exact library. This one is run is is uh, hosted on my local server, whereas this is being hosted on a remote server. Yes, we don't control this server. We do control this server. All right. Why would you do one or the other? Uh, ideally, in a production environment, you know, once it's uh, ready to be deployed and for uh, uh, for use for um, for the for, for the mass mass use of, of your website, we prefer CDNs. Okay, because these these uh, uh, these machines, these servers, are typically uh, more popular than our servers. Okay, chances are that uh, someone has already visited a website. That is more popular than yours, right? And they are using a CDN, such as this one. Okay? So chances are that somebody already visited Facebook, already visited Google, already visited Twitter, 
before coming to yours that is yet not as popular. All right, so chances are that they already that their browser already downloaded the CSS. Okay, uh, and if you link to to a similar CDN, your browser won't bother to re-downloading that same CSS. Right, it already has it cached uh, locally on the on your machine, on their machines. Yes, right. So so what what uh, what that will entail is that your page will load you know just that uh, a little bit faster, right? Because your browser is smart enough not to re-download that CSS if it's hosted on a CDN, right? If instead you host it locally on your machine, your browser will download that CSS, even though it already has it. Yes, it will be, it will be a wasted uh, network connection. All right. So, so for now, for development purposes, we're going to have, uh, we're going to host it locally so that our IDE uh, can we can use, um, you know, type ahead and um, and can give us uh, um, and help us, right? For now, I'm going to uh, comment this, uh, but at the end of the semester, we're going to we're going to reverse this, right? We're going to comment ours and uncomment the CDN. Okay? All right. Uh, all right, so this is uh, the login page. Uh, also, other things that, uh, uh, that we mentioned, uh, we're, we're using uh, Container Fluid is a, is a uh, class uh, uh, defined by Bootstrap um, uh, that uh, adds, adds some white spaces right, on either end, the, the left and the right. Uh, and, um, uh, so you, you should you should use you should uh, use a lot of these uh, uh, classes that already be, have been defined by Bootstrap to make things look pretty and and uh, and, and add nice white spaces. Uh, we also mentioned to use uh, labels uh, with fours that that refer to uh, IDs so that you increase the the the, the clickability the the touch area for the user. Uh, we also mentioned to use good practice on on code that looks. Um, uh, makes it easier for other other developers to read. Right? So declare every attribute in a, in a, in a separate uh, line. Right? Remember, you're coding for others, not yourself. Right? Other folks are going to be responsible to maintain your code. Anything we can do to make it easier on them, the better. Uh, we are also adding a class form control, which uh, renders all our controls uh, to behave as block, right? as opposed to be inline in input input fields. By default, are inline, right? This class, this class makes them behave as block, right? Making take take up the entire width of the page. Um, we uh, let's see what else did we do? Uh, we added um, uh, hyperlinks uh, to to behave as buttons um, or to render as button using the BTN, BTN default, BTN primary, BTN block. Those are all Bootstrap classes to make it look as block uh, buttons. Right, and right now they just behave by by uh, navigating to uh, to pages that don't exist yet, right? But we'll be adding them in a minute. Uh, what else? Um, uh, another practice that it's that uh, unfortunately Bootstrap does not follow is that these classes you will be creating your own classes throughout the semester. Yes, uh, and a good practice is to uh, any classes that you create uh, to uh, prepend them with some. A identifier that uh, it's clear that you created it, right? Uh, that it belongs to your organization or to you as an individual. That it's your class, right? So yeah, you can distinguish between classes that you created and classes from other libraries, right? Unfortunately, Bootstrap uh, did not follow that practice. It would have been nice that Bootstrap would prepend it you know, with something in front of it so that we could, you know, we could know. Uh, that um, that these are all um, uh, bootstrap uh, classes. Uh, well, may maybe not BS. Uh, maybe maybe some, something else. Bootstrap. Uh, some other uh, um, prepend right so that you know that this is a class that was created by Bootstrap. Make sense? Um, anyway, if you are creating uh, your own classes, please use maybe a three-letter. Um, uh, just uh, 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 a uh, word, or um, uh, maybe your your initials or something, right? Uh, so that in, uh, you understand that it's your classes. Okay. Um, let's see what else. All right, so let's let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, notice that um, uh, here we have a a little problem here that uh, 
we don't have a white space after our input field, so let's fix that. Uh, notice that uh, these have a nice uh, five pixel between these these buttons. Let's 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 uh, let's fix it over here. Uh, so so any styles any any uh, styling that you you, you would do, um, um, you should put it in a separate uh, file where you can uh, maintain it separately. Okay. So for instance, a good place, a typical place to put it in is in its own dedicated uh, CSS directory. And a good name that is very common is style. Uh, styles.css, okay, which is now uh, uh, empty, and we're going to load it from our login page. Uh, you should never have uh, a CSS in your HTML documents. Uh, it's a bad practice. Instead, it's better practice to instead have it in a file that it's a reusable um, artifact. You can say href, and then go up to CSS. Oh wait, CSS. There it is. Uh, and then load uh, the style sheets. Okay, so we loaded that style sheet. Um, uh, it is common that you try and fix it here in the uh, uh, using the, I, the, uh, the the browser, right? Where you you start playing around with the, the stylings of these of these buttons or these input fields to see how can you fix this uh, this problem. Uh, we can inspect that input field, and uh, in that input field, maybe we can add some margins below it. You can say add some margin at the bottom and say five pixels, right? So that seems to be to, to fix it, right? And apply that margin to the input field, right? It adds it adds that that additional spacing uh, uh, below it. Uh, so we can grab this and then we want to apply it to this input field, or maybe we could apply it across all input fields. I think that would that would work. Uh, so in the style sheet, uh, we could say uh, you know grab all the input fields. All of them, uh, meaning this says uh, I'm referring to all tag, all elements whose name is input. Okay, uh, and I want you to do the following transformation. Right? I want you to uh, override the default margin bottom attribute, whatever it is, probably zero. It's zero pixels, uh, the default. I'm going. I want you to override it to five pixels instead. Okay, uh, so that if I if I refresh. Notice that that change has been made permanent now. Okay, so wherever I will have an input field, it'll add it uh, below it. Make sense? Okay. Uh, notice I haven't put a placeholder. Let's add some placeholders as well. Uh, so let's uh, let's put a placeholder and say that uh, a placeholder for a username maybe maybe Alice uh, password um, uh, placeholder for a password. Okay, so that's a, a placeholder. Uh, so some hint on what is it that we want the person to type in there, and probably we'll want some uh, some uh, title at the top saying that this is the login page. Everyone okay? All right. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's keep going. Now, one of the things that uh, that uh, um, Yeah. So now, now let's let's reuse the same content to, to create the uh, the, um, uh, the the register page, right? Which is which is going to look very very similar to this, and we'll do that in the next video.